Weekday Hot Topics are here with Whoopi, Sunny Hostin, Joy Behar, Sarah Haynes, and Jedediah Vila. Now, let's get things started. First of all, I just have to call out there is a perfect afro in yes, the audience. Yes. It is right there. Yes. Very symmetrical. It is the per it is the afro we all wanted to have. <laughs> Thank you, Link. Thank you. <laughs> You know, a former Miss Universe, Alicia Machado, has been going public with claims that Donald Trump fat shamed her for gaining weight. She says he called her Miss Piggy and threatened to fire her. And Trump's not backing down. Here's what he said about her on Fox and Friends yesterday. Take a look. She was the worst we ever had. The worst, the absolute worst. And, you know, she gained a massive amount of weight. And uh, it, was, it was a real problem. We had a, we had a real problem. Not only that, her attitude. And we had a real problem with her. Now, the average size of the American woman is size 16. That's the average size. So what message is he sending to female voters again <laughs> with this? The I mean, it's not like, you know. The message is don't vote for me. <laughs> <laughs> for me, what, what struck me is that um, Secretary Clinton, again, was able to drag him into this rabbit hole. Um, he didn't even seem to see it coming. But she played this game of, of dog whistle politics, which I think was really effective because she said, and he called her Miss Housekeeping because she's a Latina. Yeah. And, that's, and she's a US citizen now, American citizen now, and she is going to vote. So what that said to me was, my goodness, she understands that Trump needs at least 33% of the Latino vote to become president. And she's speaking to those people and saying, he doesn't respect you, but I do. And I thought that was masterful, mm -hmm. right? There's also, masterful. I, I agree. There's also a big problem here, though, which is that this guy doesn't know how to apologize, it seems, because this happened a long time ago, and everybody has a past, and all of us have said things that maybe we sit and say, I regret, but it seems as though he doesn't regret it, because the comment here, the only acceptable remark is, you know what, that was a long time ago, and I was a different man, and I'm sorry. I'm deeply sorry that I said no, those things. Goes the other but way. that shows yeah. character. Yeah. There's a character flaw here, and everyone wants to blame... Only one? This is a big one. This is a big yeah, one, yeah, though, and right. everybody yeah. wants to blame his handlers and say, why isn't he being told? And I say, you know what, though? You're a grown man running for president. You're responsible for what you've said, and you're responsible That's for right. owning up. And yeah. I don't care who your handlers are. Mm -hmm. Grow up and say, I'm sorry. But That's what, what I want to hear. What about, um, what about the Republican women that have stood by him and have said, I'm going to, to vote for Trump? How is it that there are Republican women that are still going to vote for him in spite of all of these missteps. They should you know, call him out. We can they ask Kellyanne tomorrow. She's coming yeah. out. She yeah. should call him out. This is, this is well, plain. We'll this is, we'll this is the plain as And see what she says. Well, yes, baby. One really cool thing is Refinery29 is actually doing something called the 67% yes. project, which is really cool. 67% of women in America are defined as plus size, which is size 14 and up, yet are consistently absent in media. So they're yeah. trying to bridge the gap so what they put out into the ether is more reflective of the actual population, yeah. which I think is so empowering and so cool, because yet again, as if there were more groups Trump could offend, he's every woman sitting in the audience, not that they only vote on certain, you know, everyone votes on right. certain issues, yeah. but I I was personally offended by that, as yeah. I think women deal with body issues at a different rate and level. Than yeah, but you know, and what gets me is that, that you know, he's 236 oh. flabby pounds himself. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. My father, my father used to say, people who live in glass houses should dress in the cellar. Yes. 
You know what was interesting? Joy, I thought the same thing. Yeah, exactly. There was this incredible article. I, I can't remember where it was, but they said that Trump's physician revealed he's 6'3 and 236 with a BMI of 29.5. Now, if you have a BMI of 30, you're considered obese. If you look at a picture of Trump right next to Jeb Bush, who is 6'3", he looks considerably shorter. So if he truly is about 6'1 or 6'2, yeah. he's morbidly obese. Well, well but playing with yeah, the numbers. Because speaking Crazy. of disrespecting women, yeah. I mean, you know, his <laughs> Trump, Trump's advisor, you know, Rudy Giuliani, remember him? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that denizen of good taste. <laughs> He was mouthing off uh, again on why he thinks Hillary Clinton doesn't have the judgment to lead the country. Take a look. Yeah. President of the United States, her husband disgraced this country with what he did in the Oval Office. And she, she didn't just stand by him. She attacked Monica Lewinsky. And after being married to Bill Clinton for 20 years, if you didn't know the moment Monica Lewinsky said that Bill Clinton violated her and she was telling the truth, then you're too stupid to be president. Well, and so, yeah. uh, so speaking of that, Rudy, you know, oh. and again, the pot calling the kettle black. Uh, your marriage didn't survive it. You know, your marriage didn't survive. So you should keep your mouth closed. And again, calling people names like stupid, oh. you know, I hate to do it because I'm trying to be a grown up, but look in the mirror, man. Yeah. Look in the mirror. You know something? He, Rudy Giuliani, publicly humiliated Donna Hanover. Yes, his by wife. announcing that he was dumping her yes. on television. On t yes. Yeah. You know he really has. Well, and this is why I say, you know, you ones. should not. Don't bring this. This is why I said to Donald Trump, don't bring this stuff up because you are just as liable. You have the honey. She's still married to her husband. You know what's weird to me about? <laughs> What's, what's strange to me, exactly, what's strange to me is the Republican Party has always supposed to be the party of family right. values and uh, traditionalists. And as Joy often reminds everyone, I'm a traditionalist. I'm a stand by your man, stay married through thick and thin. And so the fact that Hillary stuck it out and they've worked on it and they come out of it on the other end still married, you would think would be sort of virtuous in the Republican to Party. To them. But it that's isn't. what I was gonna say, jumping straight to her intellect rather than the first thing I go to is a sign of strength. Because it's it's not yeah. always the easiest thing to leave. It, you know, sometimes you need to leave, sometimes you yeah. you know, staying it out. But there's a fortitude there that I actually recognize more that a woman that can stay through that. Yes. So I, I, well, I find it interesting. Way, I don't it's get not it. her her problem. It's, also it's his problem. True, and it's also politically, not to use your word, Rudy, but stupid, because you're marginalizing. How, there are a lot of women that stay with their men out yeah. there that are voting yeah, right now. That's right. And I'm not mm -hmm. here to judge, look, would I have stayed? Maybe not. But that's not up to me. That's not my marriage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So stay out of her marriage. Stay out of everybody's position. You want to judge her on policy? You can judge her on policy sure. and on her Find record. Something. Leave her Find marriage something. out Leave of it. Leave her marriage yeah. out of it. That's her you know, business. And you know, yeah. to yeah. the crazy. One more thing on that. Yeah. Quick. To the family values point, Newt Gingrich, who was another family oh, values yes. hypocrite, between him and Trump, they had nine wives, okay? Yeah. Nine? <laughs> nine. Yes. But, but nine. you know, but I've, wait, I've had lots of husbands as well. Yeah, but, but you're not a hypocrite. Well, yeah, you're but, not a hypocrite. But, you're but, not a hypocrite. you know, but I can't say why people break up. Yeah. I don't know why they break up. But Julian, for me, Rudy Giuliani has no business, no business no. talking about Talking about this or anything else, when it comes to disgracing a city, yeah, you stepped up in 9-11, but I do remember the day before, we, New York was not happy with you. No. Yeah. Okay? Because we were pissed. We didn't like how you treated your wife. We didn't like what you did because you made us part of it. Mm -hmm. Well, we okay? know about him in New York. We well, know about him. Yes, that's what I was doing. Yeah, now the yeah. I'm saying the country yeah. needs to know it again. Well, you know, I'm just saying. Yeah. Shush. And why is Trump surrounding <laughs> why, Rudy? Why is Trump surrounding <laughs> himself with as ale? Because as Chris, Chris Rock says, weird. Crackhead, go with crackhead. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back with more hot <laughs> Coming up, can Trump and Clinton supporters really get along? The ladies reveal if their politics have wrecked any relationships. Our political view is smart. Why is this race in a dead heat? Why isn't she running away with it? That was so masterful and yet a missed opportunity by Trump. And fearless. Be really clear about how you're going to talk about race. Don't miss the view. We're not done yet.
tomorrow on ABC. Ahead, Keeper Sutherland tells the ladies about his new mega hit series, Designated Survivor. So National Voter <laughs> Registration Day partnered with thousands of organizations to get people to the polls and we're helping them out all week. Media company The Skim launched a nonpartisan Skim the Vote, no excuses campaign that has registered over 85,000 people and counting. For more information, go visit our website because we'll tell you whatever you want to know. Okay. Female, I, no oh, thank you, you didn't have to. I want to correct something. Hold on. Let me tell Joy. Yeah. needs to make a correction. Right. I said that between Gingrich and Trump, they had nine wives. I was wrong. It's between Gingrich, Trump, and Giuliani. Oh, I uh. thought you... Oh, my God. Right. I thought you said nine lives. No. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm so serious. That That's would be where I was. These That's rats. where I was saying. <laughs> my Lord, you know, female exotic dancers in Louisiana are suing over a new law that forbids women under 21 from performing in a strip club. The law does not extend to the male exotic dancers, but should 18-year-olds be allowed to strip if they're of legal age? Yes, I think they should. I think they should. You're 18 years old, you can vote, you can serve your country, you can drive a car. You can't rent a car, and but you can't. You can't rent a car, but you can drive a car. And 18 is an adult, so I don't like government coming in and saying, we're here to tell you what's responsible and what's right for you. And I may sit here and say, that's a bad decision, that could lead you down a bad path, but that's me making a judgment. And I need these 18-year-olds who are adults to be able to make that decision for themselves. Mm -hmm. I also don't like that it doesn't extend to men. That's a constitutional violation. I think the Equal Protection Clause of the Constitution is going to be violated because you got a problem with women doing it, you don't have a problem with men doing it. What, what does that say to society? Yeah, right. mm -hmm. Well, okay. I, uh... <laughs> <laughs> she just here, agrees. I, here I go. Yeah. Um, I, I agree with you. If you're, if you're you know, going to ban women from doing this, men should be included in the bill. But one, at 18, there are many ordinances around the country where 18-year-olds can't work or perform in establishments that sell alcohol because the drinking age is 21. So I think the the, the number, uh, the, the, the age makes sense. But I also think if you look at strip clubs around the country, those clubs are regulated. You can't see them on every corner. You see them in a red light district. And that's because legislatures and society has determined that children um, and families shouldn't be walking by adult entertainment places. So there is a real space in our society um, for regulation, and, and, and I don't know why we're so uncomfortable with saying, you know what, it's really not okay um, necessarily to have a strip club on, on every corner. Maybe this it's really not, not okay. Yeah, but not it's not to regulate the business brick and mortar without putting it, putting the, that on the dancer or themselves? Well, I, I, I think it's okay in our society to say at 18 you can't drink and, and you shouldn't strip either. Well, how like, about, I, I'm okay. okay, I'm so, okay so, with that. All right, are you okay with at 18 you can't have an abortion if you decide to? Well, that's a whole nother topic. No, it's not, it's the same thing. Either, either you're going to give people the right to tell you what to do with your body and, and to make decisions for you, or you're not. So you have to make a, you have to make a decision because, as I tell you, a long time ago, uh, my mom and I had a discussion and I was railing about uh, choice, you know, because I was like, the person wasn't making the choice I wanted them to make. And my mother looked at me and said, so it's just your choice then. You're marching for just your choice, because if you're talking about choice, then you have to accept both sides of that choice. It's not just you. Mm -hmm. And I, it never left my head. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like we ask a lot of 18-year-olds <coughs> sometimes, and sometimes 18-year-olds get themselves in a situation where they need to make some money. And I'd rather have them in a controlled environment if they choose that that's the best way for them to work their way out of there, because no stripper wants to stay stripping forever. Or well, most of the strippers that I know, and I know a lot of them. Uh, <laughs> hey, listen, I have a lot of friends that do a lot of different kinds of things to take care of their families, you know. And I don't, I don't judge because, you know, <laughs> I, who am I? I'm not, you know. I, it's not my, yeah. it's not my place. All I can do is support them and try to help them get where they want to get to. But I think you have to, you have to really. It's a struggle, I know, it's, but you yeah, have to think about I'm, it. I'm, I'm uncomfortable with it, but I'm very comfortable. Well, I won't strip I'm, now. I'm, but, okay. <laughs> but I am.
am comfortable with the notion that we regulate things. You know what's interesting? This is a little off topic, but I'm, I'm doing a report for Nightline tomorrow on mm -hmm. pole dancing. There are these pole dancing competitions, and I, I'll admit, <laughs> yeah. I did that. I went, I, 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 I went it? into it. I asked Joy I to come it. with me, and she said no. No, but no, I, uh, no. We did it. Yeah, no, she told me. I did yeah. the pole dancing. And yeah, I'm trying to hold her up. Because <laughs> because but, but, it was and not it's pretty. very hard, but what I, and I will say, I went in kind of with a preconceived notion of what pole dancing is. No. It could, <laughs> yes. You? Me. Oh, my Why? goodness. What is a preconceived notion? You know, that it's like a stripper thing, and but it's, it's an workout. athletic Body thing, thing, and it could be an Olympic sport. I mean, I couldn't do any of the moves these women Women were incredible, and it did open my eyes to to pole to dancing. The, and and you know sometimes because it says it on television doesn't necessarily mean that's what it is. Because you know we get a lot of our preconceived ideas from things we see on TV. Yeah, so yeah. you see a stripper, she's on Law and Order. You know she's like dragging her leg along. It's like the whole thing. We'll be right. What? I have a for her. Okay, yeah. Joe. So wait, we'll come back. Right, Let's okay. come back. Uh, we'll be right back with more hot topics. <laughs> <Bye>. <laughs> The View would like to thank Apple and Eve for providing our entire studio audience with a bottle of their delicious juice. A new study that <laughs> focused on men alone found that having sex can be a religious experience. <laughs> Perhaps, and I feel like we talked about this because I think you made this joke last week. Uh, making love <laughs> releases the love hormone. Uh, which boosts spirituality, apparently, and perhaps explains why people yell, oh, God, didn't yeah, you make I this? Did. You yeah, did. Yeah, did. Yeah, did. Yeah. Didn't we have this we conversation? Just had this conversation? We just had this conversation. So let's go to something else. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask you one question? I was yeah, yeah, yeah. The question I was going to ask you is quickly, since you're a libertarian, you don't believe in regulations and everything. Some what regulations. A, what about seatbelts? Is that an option, or is that... Should that be required? No, seatbelts are, you're endangering the life of somebody else. What I'm interested in is laws where you're, you're an 18 year old, you want to strip, uh -huh. you're an adult, oh, you're responsible yeah. for your own fate. But in okay. a seatbelt situation, you're yeah. impacting the life of somebody okay. else. Okay, I just yeah, wanted to make actually. sure that yeah. was true. All right. Glad um, we cleared that up. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> I try to understand libertarians, and I really No, libertarians don't. support yeah. some regulation, just not excessive. Yeah, not crazy regulations. Yeah. Yep. Like, you know. <laughs> I'm not even gonna do it. Not even gonna do it because it's just low hanging fruit. Why why yeah. Yeah. women did come out on top in another survey that found that we are the ones more likely to curse in the workplace more than men. Now, are any of those right now? I don't know. Uh huh. That's a, yeah. you know, to me it's a low you think yeah. deeper? <laughs> of course they did. <laughs> yeah, I, you better I, hope they did, because it's three hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars if they did. I won them ahead of time. Oh, oh they, you got did. Yeah, they, they got it. They got it. <laughs> you beat, can you beat me? No. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I, I swear a lot, it, it's really bad because some people say it's because you're not using your word or intellect to find another word, yeah. but it's so cathartic to drop certain words. The thing is that whereas I don't judge other people for using them, the second it comes out of my mouth, I'm like, that was so unprofessional. <laughs> yeah, like there's work, something, right? yeah. Because well, it work. makes me think what my parents would oh, do if they were standing like there. And I know, I, I grew up s the same as you, uh, Sarah, which was basically people that curse don't have the vocabulary to use an appropriate word. But and now so, you're smart enough to know that's not that's true. Not true. Well, yeah. I will say, it's true. Because now I'm around women that, that use that a lot of flim, flim, flim flarm flarm um, all the time and, and that are brilliant. Mm. So My I, father was very old fashioned about mm. that. I mean, here's a guy who fought the Nazis, used to pull out his own teeth, and yet <laughs> you could not say the F word around him. Oh, he would have a fit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And he yeah. was a tough truck driver, and mm -hmm. yet he was very squeamish about the women's cursing. Well, because yeah. for years, yeah. you know, this idea of the woman, the woman as this delicate little, yeah. you know, oh, I can't hear that word, I can't hear it. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> You know, I love the words because I love the language. Yeah, mm -hmm. So for me, I do, I do, because you know, we talked about a word today that I find really offensive, but adults allow their children to say it all the time. Yeah. Rudy Giuliani said, yeah, that stupid. word's stupid. Yeah, I hate See, that word. To me, that's a bad word. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's an ugly word. But you can say several words that start with F, 
yeah. in the most loving way. And you cannot say stupid with a smile. Mm -hmm. That's but true. you can use the F bomb with a smile. That's so I'm right. saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good point. I grew I up, I'm very know. close, but I'm not doing it. <laughs> you know, I grew up in a house where cur my mom cursed my dad. Mm -hmm. And my mom, it was colorful. She worked in theater, and she felt like sometimes that was the word that best expressed how you felt. But because cursing was around me, it wasn't a vulgar thing, and it wasn't a dumb thing. It was you not being afraid to express yourself. If that was how you felt, you said it. And we laughed about it at the dinner table, and I had grandparents that curse, then curse crazy Italian parents? family. I, I curse in front of my parents now, and it's not an ugly thing. Right. It's an expressive, light, that's how you feel. It's okay to express how you that's feel. How I talk that's how I talk about it. My grandson. I, but, I, go but, ahead. See, now, we, Wait, I used to said, teach said, my, yes. I said he can swear if he wants. He's only five. Then, then he got in trouble in school, and my, my daughter blamed it on me. <laughs> <laughs> So you can't really let the kids do it because well, they get can, in trouble. Well, you can, but you school. have to. You have to hit them. Listen, I can tell. Listen, yeah. you know what I did? I taught all my grandkids how to curse. <laughs> oh you no! Know? Yes, and maybe one day I'll tell you the outcome is really a lot of fun. But right now we got to go. Oh, but I'll tell, tell you guys. Tell yeah, us. we got to go. Manager Kellyanne Conway is live, and it's all on the table. Plus, Oscar winner Lupita Nyong'o and David Oyelowo. So you know, I, this thing kind of knocked me out. This uh, adults take mental health days off once in a while. And a blogger on parenting site, Scary Mommy, says that kids need them too. Yeah. They said that the pressures of school can hit them so hard once in a while that they need to let off steam. Would you allow your kid to say to you, I just, I can't take it today? A hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. Let yeah. them stay home and curse all day. <laughs> <laughs> Let off the steam. I yeah. think if we're if we're going to be open and honest about mental health and the, the fact that we don't recognize it or and there's still a stigma involved, mm -hmm. we need to start young because it starts young. Yeah. And I mm -hmm. think recognizing that kids struggle, whether it be depression, anxiety, just feeling overwhelmed socially, mm -hmm. to remind them that it's just as important to stay home for their mind and their yeah. heart mm -hmm. as it is a cold or a sore throat. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I. I, I grew up, you know, wanting to have perfect attendance, and my mom was a teacher, and it was like, I had to be in my deathbed to take a day off from school. I was like, get up and go to school. Get up and go to school. And uh, Are you like that with your kids? I was. And then recently, uh, when my son was in middle school, he called me from the school. He was having a hard day with some other kids. And <coughs> he called, and he's like, I need you to come pick me up. And I was like, why are you sick? Did you fall? And he was like, I just, I, I'm having I trouble, and I, I just need to, I need you to pick me up. And I was like, no, I'm not picking you up. Up, and then I heard his voice, and I said, Mom will be right there. And I picked him up, Aww. and he just needed it. He just needed it, and I let him stay home the next day, too. And well, it how was. How long would you let that go on? As long as he needed it. Yeah. Like, that was where I came down. It was like my husband went nuts. He's like, this is ridiculous. But you know, people I, forget that it. We, have, we have substituted a lot of things for time off from four kids. They don't, you know, they're, they're scheduled oftentimes within an inch of their lives. Yes, and yeah. sometimes it's too much. I mean, I know how we get when it's just overwhelming. Yeah. And sometimes you just gotta listen to your kids. Your kids are not dumb. No. They know how they feel. And I know a lot of us were raised with, you know, our parents didn't listen. If we said, listen, I really, this is really not a good day for, this is like, look. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You don't know a good and day. So, yeah. but I think we've come such a long way that we can now take a moment to listen to our kids if they're saying something to us that affects them. Because yeah. most 97% of kids are not going to lie to you. Yeah. They're just not. They well, just, you know, they don't, it's not their thing. Sometimes the parents don't want to do it because they have to go to work and they don't have backup. I you know? understand. Well, but sometimes you can't. If you don't have a good relationship with your kids, you can think your kids are lying. They're just trying to get out of school. But my mom, I had a really tough, when I was in high school, it was really diligent. It was crazy. My 
my mom used to look at me and, and say, baby, take a day if you need it. We yeah. had that kind of, because she knew I wasn't going to take advantage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She just saw her yeah. kids struggling, and yeah. she was like, let me. And I think most parents, okay. most parents, I think, are starting to get that way. Yeah. But, you know, on a totally different note, we lost some really iconic people this week. You know, yesterday, former Israeli President Shimon Perez died, and over the weekend, we lost golfer Arnold Palmer, and actor Bill Nunn, who I worked with, and sister act, he played my boyfriend. Yeah. Oh. You know? And Radio and, Rahim. And, and Radio Rahim, but you know, I, I'm, it's all about sister act, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> But he was, he was a wonderful, I mean, all, these, these, all yeah. three of these men were sort of wonderful assets to our Absolutely. world. And we just wanted to say, you know, condolences to family. Mm -hmm. And we, of course, will be right back. Yeah. Okay. Think you know Kiefer Sutherland? Get ready for a side of TV's biggest action hero that'll shock you right after this. This week, you know we've got the hottest hot topics. And with the election now just weeks away, our political view is sizzling. Because tomorrow, tell them, Whoopi. We're going to be talking to Donald Trump's campaign manager, Kellyanne Conway. Plus, we can't wait to hang with Lupita Nyong'o, David Oyelowo, Colin Jost, Michael Che, and Haley Atwell. Wow! All new this week on ABC. That's right. <laughs> Please welcome the amazing Kiefer Sutherland. For those of you who don't know, your dad, uh, the incredible Donald Sutherland. Um, <laughs> you found these pictures of the two of you from when you were young. Oh. And now continuing the Sutherland acting dynasty is your daughter, Sarah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, She plays Julia Louis-Dreyfus's daughter on Veep, which just won yeah. Best Comedy at the Emmy. So congratulations. So. Did you did you have any angst when she said I think I want to be an actor or were you just go ahead baby I didn't I didn't have angst uh, my daughter's incredibly smart mm -hmm. uh, and, and was a phenomenal student uh, spoke four languages uh, wow. spoke Latin old Greek uh, was just an amazing student and so I had great aspirations for her very much like my mother and father right. uh, both incredibly talented and successful actors when I made the choice to go do this right. they really let me find my way right. uh, and so I have had to do the same thing for Sarah whether I liked it or not right. she was right, going right, to right. do this and uh, I was saying earlier, I don't even think I, I couldn't tell you my daughter's agent's name. Right. <laughs> she's done this all on her own. Uh, I think she's incredibly talented. I'm really proud of her. Aww. God, I love you. Now you're, you're in one of the most anticipated shows this season called Designated Survivor. We saw a clip. Yeah. Tell everybody a little bit about it, baby. Well, first of all, I'm, I'm so grateful that people chose to watch it. So I'm, I'm thrilled by that. There's always the great fear that there's all this anticipation and no one shows up so uh, but the show functions on so many different levels it's a family drama what happens to the wife and the children uh, that move into the White House overnight and then the thrilling aspect of the show is the investigation into who committed who the terror attack Ooh. and as you start to find that out what ultimately is the appropriate response yeah. was well, if you weren't busy enough with acting you're also adding singer to your resume with a new CD <laughs> You're going to sing from called Down in a Hole. Why did you decide to put this out? Um, the truth is I had no intention of, of making an album. I'm incredibly aware of the stigma of an actor becoming a musician. Uh, but I had written a bunch of songs that I was really proud of and that I liked. And I took them to a friend of mine, Jude Cole, uh, who's been one of my best friends for all my life and an incredible musician. And I wanted to record a couple and see if maybe I could send them to BMI or Sony and get one of their artists to record them. Uh, and he convinced me, uh, because he liked the songs and the way they sounded and the way we recorded them, uh, he convinced me to go forward with that. And, and the truth is, I owe him a great deal because it ended up being one of the great creative experiences of my life. Wow. Well, here today to perform for all of you, calling out your name from down in a hole, let's all give it up for Keith or Oh, good. Never 
said goodbye And I never got to cry They took it all away Never be the same No way We'll never be the same Calling out in the night Fighting for my life I can't be still In this place we call home I'm calling out your name Knowing that we'll never be the same And I had no place to hide They took it all away And we'll never be the same No sponsor Wyndham Rewards. Joy is blindfolded in the wind booth today, She's which is not. Put the blindfold on. <laughs> which is full of numbers that represent our studio audience. <laughs> and they are about to pick a winner. Joy, are you ready? Pick a winner. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Here, come out. We don't want to see you fall. Who is the winner? The winner is number 181. Where's 181? Where's 181? 181? 181? Look at your number. Somebody has to have it. Oh, grab another number. Oh. Don't look, though. <laughs> number 68. What's your name and where 
where are you from? My name is Lord Benitez. I'm from Teaneck, New Jersey. Well, I'm going to tell you where you're going right now. Congratulations. You're getting a trip to stay at the Westward Look Wyndham Grand Resort and Spa in Tucson, Arizona. And we're giving away two more trips tomorrow. Tune in to see which audience member gets one. And viewers at home need to visit our website by midnight Eastern tonight to see how to enter for a chance to win tomorrow's vacay. Nice. Congratulations. So, thanks for coming. Have a great day, everybody, and take a little time to enjoy the view.